and to help us understand why light refracts when it hits a new medium at an angle, I'm going to use an analogy. So have you guys ever done the thing where you're shopping in the grocery store with your parents and you start like riding the carts around? Yeah, maybe not recently, right? But like when you were little, oh. Oh, yeah. maybe recently, who knows? Okay, so I want you to imagine you are riding a shopping cart through, um, through like one of the aisles in a supermarket, right? But all of a sudden, someone has spilled something on the floor, like clean up on aisle three and the stop and shop robot guy with the googly eyes is gonna come over and clean it up, okay? So here's you, you're like riding on a shopping cart and I'm gonna have you represent the incident wave. So I'm gonna put our eye for incident. I'm gonna draw a normal line. It's that perpendicular line that occurs at a medium. And we're going from the clean area of the grocery store where your cart travels fast into, I don't know what they spilled. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they spilled all of the pudding cups or something like that. I feel like you'd really have to try to make a mess of this magnitude. Right. And then you get to the slow area of the grocery store where the floor is sticky and gross, right? Okay, so as you go, your cart is gonna unevenly hit this barrier. And that puts one tire is gonna get stuck in this mess. What's that gonna do for the cart? When it changes direction, is that gonna make a larger, smaller, or the same size angle? My cart, if there is no problem with just travel in a straight line. But where's it gonna go now? it'll go farther down. So when light slows down, it's gonna change direction. Think of it as like this tire gets stuck and it rotates the cart. This part of the cart is going faster, but this wheel is stuck and that's gonna take the ray of light and make it go downward, changing the direction. Your refraction ray diagram is gonna look exactly like this. Things to keep in mind, in the fast material, you're going to get a larger angle than in the slow material. Okay. So you're going to notice you're going to have the same five parts as a reflection ray diagram, right? We've got the incident ray, the incident angle, the normal line, reflected or uh, refracted ray, refracted angle, normal line, thing to be careful about now is now my angles don't have to be equal. In my faster material, the medium in which light travels faster, in my fast material, I'm gonna have a fatter angle. In my slow material, like the dirty area <laughs> where like your shopping cart is stuck and its wheels are gross, right? You get a slimmer angle. In the next class, we'll get you the math behind like how do we figure out what one angle is compared to the other. But for now, I just want us to be able to measure and draw these. So I'm gonna draw us three pictures, fast to slow, slow to fast, and what if you hit them head on, right? So we did fast to slow already, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. If light is traveling from a fast medium small index to a slow medium, big index, that means light is gonna bend towards the normal line, making a slimmer angle. So if I check, I need to make sure I have all five things. Incident ray, incident angle, refracted ray, refracted angle. In the fast material, I have the fatter angle. In the slow material, I have the slimmer angle. That's why I had us do index of refraction first, because I want you to be able to really quickly look at our chart and be like, that material's slow, that one's fast, so it does this. Right? 
But in the shopping cart analogy, what if I still had it go from fast to slow? But I had the light ray hit straight on. And our shopping cart analogy, if the shopping cart hit like this, both wheels would hit at the same time. And since both wheels hit at the same time, would the light bend? Oh, this is what happens with regular panes of glass. Because light is hitting it straight on, like your incident angle is zero, that also means your refracted angle is zero. The light would just keep going. And it might slow down, right? The speed would change, but the direction doesn't change if you hit head on. That's why when you look at a normal mirror, you or mirror, a normal window, you don't normally see distortion. You have to have special circumstances. So if the light hits straight on, then no refraction. You don't meet the angle requirement, so the light doesn't bend. Last picture you need to have then. What if instead of going from fast to slow, it went slow to fast? This might be something like, ooh, this might be something like a fish is in the water. Compared to air, water is a slower medium. So it should have light at a slimmer angle. When that light bends out into the air, it should have a fatter angle. So let's say my fish is swimming in the water. The fish's light hits the air-water interface, but now in the new material, the light has to bend farther to make a fatter angle. Now my angles aren't equal. Anyone who's fished before knows that like the fish isn't always where it seems to be. In this case, if I had a fisherman, let's say it's like, a, I don't know, Tom Hanks is like spear hunting in what's the movie where he gets stuck on the island with Wilson? Castaway. Castaway. So Tom Hanks is like seeing this fish, right? When he sees the fish, his brain thinks that light has traveled in a straight line. He thinks the fish is here. So the scene where he's like going to try and fish with a spear and he just keeps missing repeatedly. That's because he's aiming for a fish that's actually lower than it looks. If you've ever like gone to take, I don't know, you wouldn't do this, take money out of a fountain and you notice that everything- oh, I've done that. <laughs> I tried to do that when I was little and I got yelled at because apparently the fountain money is for other people. But who knows that when they're like seven. I the fountain money, where like people throw in money into fountains to make wishes. I didn't know that, right? <laughs> Everything looks deeper than it appears because when light travels from water into air, the faster speed puts the angle as a fatter angle, making an illusion of a fish that's closer to the surface than it really is. Now, that's enough to actually get you started on your refraction lab. If you want to get started on your refraction lab, you're going to go to Pivot, and in Pivot, you'll see it as a video. So let me pull those up so you can see those. So part two of homework 10.3 is this Pivot like lab thing. In this, we're just measuring the incident and a refracted angles. So you go to homework 10.3, part two. And it's gonna show you a video. In the video, you're gonna measure the incident and refracted angles, and we'll try to use them to come up with a pattern. We'll try and use them to figure out our angle of refraction and also our index of refraction. 